Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. You know that song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Who knows that song? His wonderful face And the things of earth Will grow strangely deep In the light Prophesy to yourself in one minute. No force is capable of hindering the purposes of God over my life. Shake away unbelief, shake away limitations. I may not look like it, but the Spirit of God is doing something. You may not feel like a man of God, but the anointing is within your horizon. There's no plan of darkness that is able to thwart the purposes of God over your life. Can you prophesy to yourself? Going to the place of destiny by the anointing, by the power of the Holy Ghost. There is no power, no force. The gates of hell does not sustain the ability to stop me. I decree and declare that I am rising by the Spirit. Hallelujah. This, this is already a message to someone. Because you see, brothers and sisters, this life has a way of taking away your gaze from Jesus some of you had to trek to come here and while you were trekking the devil told you where is the grace you claim you have for prosperity some of you had to fight all kinds of battles to be here but let me tell you if your life were ordinary the devil will not waste his time around you there was something the spirit of the Antichrist saw with the star and began to manipulate Herod to look for where Jesus is. Satan has refused to let you go because there is something in your life and around your destiny that makes him uneasy. And in the name of Jesus, I declare to you again that no power, it's already too late, no power, no power of hell will stop you. You see, for as long as it is night, you will continue to weep. But when light comes, this light we are talking about, the Bible says there were many lights. Buddhism has some light. Occultism has some light. They manipulate things. But the Bible says he made two great lights. Great lights. The lights that rule in the day and the lights that rule in the night when the sun shines you wonder if there are stars again all of a sudden the brilliance that is the same way god does not bless you by just prophesying to you alone he blesses you by getting you filled with his light you become so full you turn back and can't find darkness again the bible says in john chapter one listen carefully and verse five it says the light shineth in darkness the light the word that you have that has been brought to you by the spirit is capable of dispelling any darkness so brothers and sisters let me encourage you you may look around your life and not find any traceable evidence that rewards your hunger and your passion for god and the devil will want to lie to you to say, for how long will you continue seeking him without a sign? Let me tell you this. Do you know in the spirit, five minutes to your breakthrough, it will still not be like it. But all of a sudden, he said, in a moment, 
in a twinkling of an eye your life will just shift and change in a way that will bless you that's how God lifts people please I want you to be very intentional about your expectation God is not a fool he doesn't call the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain creator of the universe what can you do what can you do over your life before you sit down. Psalm 45. Shabrando zikatulia hasarabale. Psalm 45. The Lord just put it in my spirit to prophesy over your life. Words are powerful. Realities are created through words. 45 verse 12 it says and the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift it says even the rich among the people shall entreat your favor there is listen I taught you something we are, we are going to teach on something but it's just a grace that came on me now listen to me listen you see brothers and sisters everything in life that we know is bought with money is that true do you agree with me but do you know that money itself is a product that is bought with something come promise promise once a phone listen carefully and then I give him money this money can buy a phone do you agree what if it is money he wants what can I give him to buy money? The name of what you give that buys money is what the Bible calls true riches. True riches. It is true riches that can purchase unfaithful mammon and alongside with it buy every other thing. The peace, the joy, the influence. Are we together? There is something in this kingdom that buys every other thing. On earth, this looks like the highest, most valuable thing. When you possess this, you can make any noise and ramble and talk rubbish. But in the kingdom, there are realities that we possess. Listen carefully. And the Bible says with it, everything, whether this, Whatever it is you can possess is, is called the true riches. There are seven of this spiritual capital. One of them is called light. We buy things with light. The power, light is capital in the spirit. The anointing is capital in the spirit. Words are capital in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands and I speak over you that in this season, I program a climate of spiritual reality above you and I declare, may it begin to call strange levels of lifting in your life. May it begin to call strange levels of honor to your life. May it begin to call strange levels of speed in your life. We're going to sit down shortly. Let me pray for the grace for speed. Now listen, 
be sensitive because the people the anointing will come on sometimes they can attempt to run physically so you hold them so they don't scatter anywhere right now i stretch my hands the grace that came upon elijah that caused him to overtake the chariot of ahas by this apostolic and prophetic grace i stand in the office of my god i shift you by speed enter a new dimension in the name of jesus speed 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 i prophesied in one day let zion be born i command speed speed in your finances speed in your spiritual life speed in every area of your life whatever level you have been in spiritually and you have refused to shift i stand by prophecy and i shift you to a new dimension new level of prophecy new level of revelation new level of encounters new levels of signs and wonders receive it in the name of jesus We see your glory. You know that song? In this kingdom it is what is on you that controls what is around you are you hearing what I'm saying in this kingdom it is the spiritual climate above you I'm speaking by the spirit it is the spiritual climate above you that controls the realities that are captured in your life it takes more than desire it takes more than zeal again I'm speaking to you any climate over you that is drawing things in your life that are putting you in trouble any climate that is refusing you from rising you are a man of God with an anointing yet doors are not opening because there is a climate in the name of Jesus I command that climate to live your life now shortly lift your hands I want to pray on your hands not you just your hands it was with the hand Moses held the rod he says and with these hands you will do signs and wonders I stretch my hands to your hands and by the spirit I make contact with your hands may these hands carry straight fire fire for signs fire for wonders you lay these hands and change the destinies of men you lay these hands and speak the purposes of the kingdom everything these hands come upon i declare that it is anointed it will be an instrument of signs and wonders in the name of jesus christ please sit down if you can just just leave those under the anointing please sit down Hallelujah. 
you see if the power of God cannot come and change you then you are wasting your time brothers and sisters I am ministering to you what the Bible calls true riches this is God's justice system oh I didn't I was not so educated oh I was not this I didn't have wealthy parents but there is something that can come upon men and help them you are receiving the help of God God doesn't just help people by wishing he puts something upon your life I've taught you this what is on you is what controls what is around you not what you want not what men say they can talk nonsense from morning till night if you ever turn and see strange results in your life whether you know it or not there is something controlling it if a man ever looks at you and says i want to bless you nobody has the heart to do it on his own no sir if as a man of god you ever call for a solemn assembly and people come there is something on you it's not about stories and nonsense what is upon you is what controls what is around you i repeat what is upon you if you desire something around you and it's not there don't look for it look for what must come upon you to bring that thing you desire always like you lord in all the earth much less love and beauty and less work nothing in this world can satisfy jesus you're the count that will run dry treasure of my heart and of my soul sing my witness you are merciful redeemer of my past and present wrong you're the holder of my future days And all my days on earth, I will away. The moment that I see you face to face. For nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the God. Other things can run dry. But Jesus, you're the car that will run dry. Jesus, you're the car that will run dry. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are gathered here and we will always allow you to build, to change to lift any spirit within this vicinity that is not of the Christ I stand here right now if there be any force any yoke any agreement upon anyone's life i speak right now be set free be released now every other influence on your life that is not of the christ bringing you oppression programming failure to your life i stretch my hands and i command liberty right now in the name of jesus Please be seated. God bless you. Mm. 
this is koinonia the anointing that comes upon you when you come here is the holy spirit doing something within you because the words that you are hearing are not just carnal words it's not just a lecture the words you are hearing is spirit and life so while the word is coming something an anointing one of the true riches of the kingdom comes with the word too if you believe what i'm teaching you you will so dominate life in a way that will surprise you when you do not possess the riches of the spirit then every other thing becomes lord over your life but those who dominate in this kingdom are those who possess the true riches of the kingdom hallelujah i have a new topic tonight but last week um, i was to give us six points on what the secret place is i gave us five and we had to stop because of the time let me quickly give us the last one please you can um especially if you were here just go back to your notes and i'll give you the last point very quickly and then we'll go to tonight's discussion we discussed last week that the secret place is a place of brokenness we discussed that the secret place is a place where we obtain mercy that the secret place is a place of revelation where the mysteries and the strategies of the spirit are revealed to men especially the mysteries that's responsible for your destiny i'm lifting your family said the spirit of god no this is not this is not for everybody i'm speaking to someone now i'm lifting your family it will be like a dream it will be like a dream i'm lifting your family 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 the lord is bringing bringing a long period of struggle for a family to end that's what the lord is doing the confusion of many years coming to end within a week completely within a week the lord is speaking to someone here and he's saying i will visit you again of course everyone can receive but this is a particular revelation god is saying i am coming to you again the way i came before i am coming again i am coming again it will be in this month this month of june he will come to you again with a very strange encounter and you will receive something from that encounter that will change your life in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated so we said that number four that the secret place is a place where we find rest and comfort rest and comfort and then number five we said the secret place is a place of revival and restoration revival revival of fire revival Koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. Thank you. Just thank him 
for life. Thank you for grace. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. It is of the Lord's mercy that we have the eyes to see the things that he has shown us by grace. Thank you. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for healings. Thank you for safety. Thank you for protection. Thank you for preservation. Don't be tired. Let the list go on and on. And tell him thank you. Lord, that I am here in the midst of your people ready to receive, I say thank you. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for the influence that he has granted you. Thank you for giving you his voice, his spirit, his wisdom, his anointing. Lord, I'm not here to complain about my many struggles. But by your spirit and your grace, I'm confident you saw them. But I'm here to say I love. without your word without your spirit nothing can be made out of our lives we stand before your people connecting with all who are part of this family around the world we declare that you alone are faithful you alone are God no man can do these things except God be with him and Lord we just want to take the time to say thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you a thousand tongues will not be enough to say thank you we're not in ministry if lives are not being changed we're not in ministry if your power is hindered through our lives and from our lives we're not in ministry if your word is not coming in season we're not in ministry if your voice is not heard in the midst of us but Lord, we thank you. We're not in ministry if no one is around to hear what you are declaring to us. You have exalted us. You have honored us. You have blessed us. And we thank you. We thank you. Tonight, I ask that you bless us, challenge us again. We have come to Bethel, the place of bread. We have come to the threshing floor. We have come to the place of purification. We have come to the place of impartation. We have come to the place of hope. We have come to the place of transformation. We have come to the place of the oil and the wine. We have come to the place where you can open our eyes and wash it with eyes out that we may see. We have come to the place where the voice of the Lord is not scarce. Tonight, oh God, we cry that in a new way you speak to us, you challenge us, set us on fire once again. And oh God, beyond the speakings of a man, we pray that your voice will echo from the throne and cause us to hear in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are my hiding place You always fill my heart With songs of deliverance Whenever I am 
afraid I will trust in you I will trust in you Let the weak say God and strong in the strength of the Lord, we will trust in you. We will trust in you. Let the wind say. sing just one more song. Amen, amen, amen. Sing it as a prophecy over your life. Let it be so. Amen, amen, amen. To your will, to your word, to your power. says now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet take your eyes away from the temporary setbacks no money no ministry no influence all that is rubbish the Bible says they looked unto him that's the key he lifted the brazen serpent and he says to look take away your eyes for all those who looked at the serpent the one on the ground could not have an effect on them he said if it be thou bid me come and Peter set his gaze but the winds were still boisterous and he turned his eyes you know that song turn your eyes upon Jesus who knows that song his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely deep in the light of his glory and I'd like you to prophesy to yourself in one minute no force is capable of hindering the purposes of God over my life shake away unbelief shake away limitations I may not look like it but the spirit of God is doing something you may not feel like a man of God, but the anointing is within your horizon. There's no plan of darkness that is able to thwart the purposes of God over your life. Can you prophesy to yourself? Going to the place of destiny by the anointing 
by the power of the Holy Ghost there is no power no force the gates of hell does not sustain the ability to stop me I decree and declare that I am rising by the Spirit hallelujah this this is already a message to someone because you see brothers and sisters this life has a way of taking away your gaze from jesus some of you had to trek to come here and while you were trekking the devil told you where is the grace you claim you have for prosperity some of you had to fight all kinds of battles to be here but let me tell you if your life were ordinary the devil will not waste his time around you there was something the spirit of the antichrist saw with the star and began to manipulate herod to look for where jesus is satan has refused to let you go because there is something in your life and around your destiny that makes him uneasy and in the name of jesus i declare to you again that no power it's already too late no power no power of hell will stop you you see for as long as it is night you will continue to weep but when light comes this light we are talking about the bible says there were many lights buddhism has some light occultism has some light they manipulate things but the bible says he made two great lights great lights the lights that rule in the day and the lights that rule in the night when the sun shines you wonder if there are stars again all of a sudden the brilliance that is the same way god does not bless you by just prophesying to you alone he blesses you by getting you filled with his light you become so full you turn back and can't find darkness again the bible says in john chapter 1 listen carefully and verse 5 it says the light shineth in darkness the light the word that you have that has been brought to you by the spirit is capable of dispelling any darkness so brothers and sisters let me encourage you you may look around your life and not find any traceable evidence that rewards your hunger and your passion for God and the devil will want to lie to you to say for how long will you continue seeking him without a sign let me tell you this do you know in the spirit five minutes to your breakthrough it will still not be like it but all of a sudden he said in a moment in a twinkling of an eye your life will just shift and change in a way that will bless you that's how God lifts people please I want you to be very intentional about your expectation God is not a fool he doesn't call the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain creator of the universe what can you do what can you do before you sit down Psalm 45 Shabrando Zikatulia Hasarabale Psalm 45 the Lord just put it in my spirit to prophesy 
over your life. Words are powerful. Realities are created through words. 45 verse 12. It says, And the daughter of Tyre shall be there with a gift. It says, Even the rich among the people shall entreat your favor. There is... Listen. I taught you something. We are, we are going to teach on something, but it's just a grace that came on me now. Listen to me. Listen. You see, brothers and sisters, everything in life that we know is bought with money. Is that true? Do you agree with me? But do you know that money itself is a product that is bought with something? Come, promise. Promise once a phone. Listen carefully. And then I give him money. This money can buy a phone. Do you agree? What if it is money he wants? What can I give him to buy money? The name of what you give that buys money is what the Bible calls true riches. True riches. It is true riches that can purchase unfaithful mammon and alongside with it buy every other thing. The peace, the joy, the influence. Are we together? There is something in this kingdom that buys every other thing. On earth, this looks like the highest, most valuable thing. When you possess this, you can make any noise and ramble and talk rubbish. But in the kingdom, there are realities that we possess. Listen carefully. And the Bible says, with it, anything, whether this, whatever it is, you can possess this. It's called the true riches. There are seven of this spiritual capital. One of them is called light. We buy things with light. The power of light is capital in the spirit the anointing is capital in the spirit words are capital in the spirit in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands and I speak over you that in this season I program a climate of spiritual reality above you and I declare May it begin to call strange levels of lifting in your life. May it begin to call strange levels of honor to your life. May it begin to call strange levels of speed in your life. We are going to sit down shortly. Let me pray for the grace for speed. Now listen, be sensitive. Because the people, the anointing will come on. Sometimes they can attempt to run physically. So you hold them so they don't scatter anywhere. Right now I stretch my hands. The grace that came upon Elijah. That caused him to overtake the chariot of Ahaz. By this apostolic and prophetic grace. I stand in the office of my God. I shift you by speed. Enter a new dimension. In the name of Jesus. Speed. Speed, speed, I prophesy it. In one day, let Zion be born. I command speed, speed in your finances, speed in your spiritual life, speed in every area of your life. Whatever level you have been in spiritually and you have refused to shift, I stand by prophecy and I shift you to a new dimension. New level of prophecy. New level of revelation. New level of encounters. New levels of signs and wonders. Receive it in the name of Jesus. We see your glory. You know.
know that so. It is what is on you that controls what is around you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In this kingdom, it is the spiritual climate above you. I'm speaking by the spirit. It is the spiritual climate above you that controls the realities that are captured in your life. It takes more than desire. It takes more than zeal. Again, I'm speaking to you. Any climate over you that is drawing things in your life that are putting you in trouble any climate that is refusing you from rising you are a man of God with an anointing yet doors are not opening because there is a climate in the name of Jesus I command that climate to live your life now shortly lift your hands I want to pray on your hands not you just your hands it was with the hand Moses held the rod he says and with these hands you will do signs and wonders I stretch my hands to your hands and by the spirit I make contact with your hands may these hands carry straight fire fire for signs fire for wonders you lay these hands and change the destinies of men you lay these hands and speak the purposes of the kingdom everything these hands come upon i declare that it is anointed it will be an instrument of signs and wonders in the name of jesus christ please sit down if you can just just leave those under the anointing please sit down Hallelujah. You see, if the power of God cannot come and change you, then you are wasting your time. Brothers and sisters, I am ministering to you what the Bible calls true riches. This is God's justice system. Oh, I didn't, I was not so educated. Oh, I was not this. I didn't have wealthy parents. But there is something that can come upon men and help them. You are receiving the help of God. God doesn't just help people by wishing. He puts something upon your life. I've taught you this. What is on you is what controls what is around you. Not what you want. Not what men say. They can talk nonsense from morning till night. If you ever turn and see strange results in your life whether you know it or not there is something controlling it if a man ever looks at you and says i want to bless you nobody has the heart to do it on his own no sir if as a man of god you ever call for a solemn assembly and people come there is something on you it's not about stories and nonsense What is upon you is what controls what is around you. I repeat, what is upon you? If you desire something around you and it's not there, don't look for it. Look for what must come upon you to bring that thing you desire. Always like you, Lord, in all the earth. 
much less love and beauty and less work nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus you're the constant run dry treasure of my heart and of my soul Witness you are merciful, redeemer of my past and present wrong, for the holder of my future days. And all my days on earth, I will away. The moment that I see you face to face For nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the God that will run dry Yes, you are the God that will run dry other things can run dry. But Jesus, you're the car that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the car that won't run dry. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are gathered here and we will always allow you to build, to change to lift any spirit within this vicinity that is not of the Christ I stand here right now if there be any force any yoke, any agreement upon anyone's life, I speak right now. Be set free, be released now. Every other influence on your life that is not of the Christ, bringing you oppression, programming failure to your life, I stretch my hands and I command liberty right now in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. God bless you. Mm. This is Koinonia. The anointing that comes upon you when you come here is the Holy Spirit doing something within you. Because the words that you are hearing are not just carnal words. It's not just a lecture. The words you are hearing is spirit and life. So while the word is coming, something, an anointing, one of the true riches of the kingdom comes with the word too. If you believe what I'm teaching you, you will so dominate life in a way that will surprise you. When you do not possess the riches of the spirit, then every other thing becomes lord over your life but those who dominate in this kingdom are those who possess the true riches of the kingdom hallelujah i have a new topic tonight but last week um i was to give us six points on what the secret place is I gave us five and we had to stop because of the time let me quickly give us the last one please you can um, especially if you were here just go back to your notes and I'll give you the last point very quickly and then we'll go to tonight's discussion we discussed last week that the secret place is a place of brokenness 
we discussed that the secret place is a place where we obtain mercy that the secret place is a place of revelation where the mysteries and the strategies of the spirit are revealed to men especially the mysteries that's responsible for your destiny I'm lifting your family said the Spirit of God no this is not this is not for everybody I'm speaking to someone now I'm lifting your family it will be like a dream it will be like a dream I'm lifting your family 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 the Lord is bringing bringing a long period of struggle for a family to end that's what the Lord is doing the confusion of many years coming to end within a week completely within a week The Lord is speaking to someone here and he's saying, I will visit you again. Of course, everyone can receive, but this is a particular revelation. God is saying, I am coming to you again. The way I came before, I am coming again. I am coming again. It will be in this month, this month of June. He will come to you again. With a very strange encounter and you will receive something from that encounter that will change your life in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated so we said that number four that the secret place is a place where we find rest and comfort rest and comfort and then number five we said the secret place is a place of revival and restoration revival revival of fire revival of love revival of passion revival of grace revival of mantles revival of new dimensions in the spirit and then i'll give you the last one and then we'll go this is not the topic for today i just want to make sure we complete the note that the secret place is the place of spiritual empowerment we gain power not by strolling on the seat it is in the secret place that we find true spiritual power in a secret place you get the anointing for your personal life and in the secret place you get the anointing to accomplish God's agenda for a season you can be anointed as a believer but not anointed to be relevant for a season listen very carefully it is possible that I'm anointed if you come to me I can pray for you but as far as God's agenda within a territory is concerned it's possible that you are not relevant there is a special anointing that one is not the anointing for a believer that one is not even the anointing for your call and office it is the anointing that makes a man relevant within a season that's why you see many anointed people become voiceless after certain seasons they are still anointed they still love God but the anointing to play a key role in God's program is not there. So although they are anointed, you still get blessed. But it's very clear that the lampstand is not on them within that season. The Lord put a very serious topic in my heart tonight that I want to share. Tonight's topic is going to challenge you is going to inspire you and is going to provoke you pray in the spirit for one minute just do what i'm asking you to do pray in the spirit 
Just pray in the spirit for one minute. Just be sensitive to the instructions. Shabala kato selebe kato selebratiash. Shekete parato sodo balatos. Shebete kato 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 balakato sekete. Manakala baruse adamalaka som British kalabaria. You're allowing your spirit contact something while you pray. Shete kete lakato sada barato sekete. Mande kato sabara kato selebratiash. Shake it to Kapura Sodo Balada 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 Balash. Shake it to Kota Seka Tele Kato. Embre Kato Salamaratu Shabrede Gede Balade Balade Don't stop. Keep praying. Shabalada Balada Balade Shake it to Teka Ratu Sada Balika God most high Jesus Christ is the Elegon of Israel Hallelujah God most high Jesus Christ is the Elegon of Israel God most high Jesus Christ Please be seated if you can Hallelujah sit down, get something to write if you can unless understand what the Lord wants to help us I'm not sure we'll be able to complete it tonight contending for kingdom relevance part one mm. contending for kingdom relevance part one Contending for kingdom relevance, part one. This is a very powerful teaching that seeks to show you how you can become a voice. You can represent the voice of God to a generation and you can rise to a position of kingdom influence. Remember, we're still in a season where God has declared that he is lifting men. Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. Please give it to us. Just sit where you are. Shekete kota salabrati kete keli adaba. Shereke to kasalabrati kete baladaba. Shele baratu sereke li adaba la daba la dabo. Shaka to ske pratish kala prendi keli ba. Reke to kasada baladaba kote adaba. Shekete baratu sekete bali adaba. Something is lifting from your life. Sheka paruta siada. Lifting from your life. Sheba kotosi. Lifting from your life, shake it I change that situation now. I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I change that situation now. For David, 
please give us amplified it says for David after he had served God's will and purpose and counsel but he served it in his own generation he said fell asleep and was buried but he said David served God in his generation it's not enough to serve God is enough to serve God within the context of a generation are we together now there are mandates that are left for generations every generation has a spiritual curriculum about God and his purposes that God intends for them to accomplish and hear me your relevance within a generation is predicated upon your understanding your generation and knowing the corporate mandate that God has put upon that generation you can live within a generation and serve God but serve God in a way and manner that does not influence a generation it's not enough to serve God you must serve God in a way and a manner that brings the purposes of God to a generation and this is what I want to teach you tonight he said David served God's will and purpose and counsel in his own generation not another generation everyone that the Bible records that was used by God was used within the context of a generation listen very carefully if you miss relevance within your generation then you have missed relevance forever are we together i think i was teaching in lagos during the younger gave that program and i gave them an illustration no matter how anointed i am anybody above 55 years is not within the scope of my generation no matter how i love them they will be blessed from my life but they will quickly go to papa oyedeko and papa deboye because those are the voices of that generation are you getting what i'm teaching you now it's not enough to seek relevance you must seek relevance within the context of a generation your voice does not speak to every generation there is a generation where your relevance is allocated to god sends men not just to places he sends men to a generation and if you cannot identify your generation of impact and influence then you will live a very useless life and david after he served the will of god there are some things that are allowed in other generations that are not allowed in others are we together every time god was about to move within the scope of a generation he would find a man or he would find men and then begin to introduce them to the dynamics of relevance and greatness contending for kingdom relevance there are things that we need to know if we are to rise to a point of kingdom influence and relevance and have taught us again and again in this place that kingdom relevance is very important to have kingdom influence and it is also very important to be able to speak the purposes of God. When you are unable to represent the purposes of God within a generation, then you may not be able to to influence that generation judges chapter 6 please 
very quickly we are going to read from verse 11 Judges chapter 6 this was an encounter that the Lord had with a young man called Gideon verse 11 and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which is in Ophrah and pertained to Joash and all of that and his son Gideon Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites remember they were being threatened by the Midianites and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said the Lord is with thee O mighty man of valor. and Gideon answered and said unto him O my Lord if the Lord be with us why then is this befallen us and where be all his miracles which our father told of saying this the Lord not do this and that and that 14 and the Lord looked upon him and said go in this thy might and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites have I not sent thee it didn't look to Gideon like he was sent but God said have I not sent thee with a message and a mandate to a people next verse 15 and he said unto him listen listen carefully he said oh my lord wherewith shall i save where not the whole world israel you have sent me with a message but that message is to a people and a context he said behold this is my limitation my family is poor in Manasseh and I am aside from the fact that the family is poor I am the least in my father's house look at the excuse he's giving God is telling him I am lifting you and then he says I cannot do the assignment because of two things one poverty There is a relationship between poverty and lack of influence and lack of relevance. Number two, lack of greatness. I am small. My family is small. And yet even in that family, I am the least in my father's house. 16. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord said unto him, Surely, I will be with thee and because of my presence with thee thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man follow me very carefully tonight <laughs> Jesus Psalm 24 and verse 6 he said this is the generation not this is the person listen carefully this is the generation that has a mandate as a generation to seek God but to seek God in the similitude of Jacob listen very carefully he's saying the word oh jacob there is oh god of jacob he said there is a generation mandated by god to seek god in the similitude of jacob are we together now when god tells you to search for him he looks for human references that are reflections of that expectation are we together when God wants to teach believers to love he will lift up John and tell them to study his life when God wants to teach people how to walk in the blessing he lifts up Abraham and tells them to study his life in James chapter 5 when God is teaching people how to pray strategic prayer he lifts up a prophet called Elijah and says study him when God wants to teach people on faith he lifts up Peter when God wants to teach men on revelation, he lifts up Paul the apostle. Are we together now? 
so god is very figurative in his expression for you to understand this scripture you have to go back to genesis 28 and genesis 32 and study how jacob sought god because he said the mandate that was on one man jacob is a mandate that one day will come upon a generation that a generation will be mandated to seek the face of god in the similitude of jacob are we together god appears to jacob in chapter 28 and until that time listen carefully there was no god of jacob when god revealed himself he said i am the god of abraham there was a way i taught abraham to seek me there were possibilities about me that no one had known but my encounter with abraham introduced the world of men to these possibilities the god of abraham then isaac the son used the god of abraham to create the god of isaac the god of abraham was a springboard the mysteries of god that his father knew and out of his own dealings with god god created a name called the god of isaac by the time we get to psalms here jacob had done his own too and god names himself by a man's experience with him jacob's encounter is so powerful that god's covenant people were not named after abraham they were not named after isaac they are not called the abrahamites they are not called the isaacites they are called the israelites not even the jacobites so powerful was this encounter that god said the generation that wants to know me must seek me in the similitude of jacob you want to influence a generation hmm. God is lifting her, Dr. Alima. I'm seeing her climb a ladder. The Spirit of God is lifting her to a higher level of influence. That's what, that's what I'm seeing in the Spirit. You want to be relevant to a generation. If you love God and you desire that through your life His purposes be established, then you must contend for kingdom influence. I've taught you again and again in this place that kingdom advance is a product of two things. One is global evangelization. Number two, influence. The purposes of the kingdom must be established in the hearts of men through evangelism and then through influence must be established across every strata of human activities. Are we together? So you must know how to birth the purposes of God. And I want you to follow me as I share with you. There are certain things in the spirit that when you touch, you will never be irrelevant. Please listen to me. But most of what it takes to be relevant, believers are not seeking it. We are seeking nonsense all around. Yet we are looking for kingdom relevance. The things that make for relevance in this kingdom are spiritual in context. First, in that order, we are searching for mundane and carnal things that do not have the fortitude to give men a voice in a generation. That's why I shared with you the secret place before coming to this topic. And David served his generation. I hope you know listen very carefully i hope you know that when the holy ghost came upon the apostles in acts chapter 2 from then onwards the strategic apostles that were listed in the bible were not the only ones who received there were many other people but a few people grew to a point where their voices echoed through history to the point that they were captured in this Bible. When you study history, not just Bible history, 
you study history and archaeology you will find out that many other spiritual things happen concurrently as at the time certain historic writings were being written spiritual things but they were not relevant to the context and the program of God within a generation it's amazing how people think because they are born again or they have a church or they have revelation they will continue to be relevant in god's program for all seasons no sir i have seen extremely anointed men and women of god and i have seen the boundaries of their relevance with respect to a generation i have seen people who are not too anointed but i've seen them at the epicenter of a generation's relevance there are men and women who would look at people like Joel Austin and look at people like Joyce Mayer. And um, if you're one who is into the things of the spirit, fasting, prayer, with all honor and respect, you may not so much appreciate their ministry because of the context of their communication. It sounds very basic. Yet, in a way that looks as though it's a charm, they have commanded the attention of a generation effortlessly, unbendingly, they have entered their sabbath in relevance and yet again and again we find anointed men miracle workers still crouching scrounging at the doorways the corridors of relevance understand what i'm teaching you tonight and you will enter your sabbath there will be no need for competition there will be no need for unhealthy comparison because you will know that the keys of a generation has been given to you You have captured my heart, consume my heart with your love. You have captured my heart, consume my heart with your love. One more time. generation he peeped into another generation that was not his own and he wanted to still negotiate and God said no 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 you have tried Abba he wanted to start building a temple to start the mandate of another generation and God said you have tried you have tried you have tried David you have served God you have shed blood in the process just relax let your son take over and he said I must still contribute let me gather the materials and God said this man David you you are a man after my own heart and because of that you may not serve in that generation but i will show you look at the messiah and david saw a vision the lord said to my lord sit down that was the coronation of jesus he said david so long he, he mastered his generation there was no other voice speaking samuel was a man who held the keys to the voice of God in his generation. You could brag and talk nonsense, but if you did not find Samuel, you would keep crying. It wasn't pride. Oh, God is everywhere. Yes, but there are gatekeepers. Samuel. Samuel. To the point that when a man was about to step into the anointing, God had to use a coincidence to lead him to Samuel. The Bible says of Samuel that none of his words, none of his words fell to the ground. But remember before Samuel started, there was a man called Eli that served the priesthood of his time. There was a period 
of more than 500 years of darkness from Malachi till the appearance of John after prophet Malachi it was somewhat a very dark season for the church no prophecy no nothing everything and all of a sudden a young boy born to a man who began to manifest a level of priesthood called John the prophet was in the wilderness and all of a sudden for the first time they would encounter a prophetic voice they had lost touch with prophecy and then John was so wise he knew when his relevance was coming to an end and when Jesus show up, showed up this is what he said that I may decrease I have exhausted myself Jesus listen John remained relevant because he announced Jesus and he kept upholding Jesus. The moment he brought Jesus down, he died too with him. Although his mandate was over, he said, who is the next? Let me uphold him. Let me give you this secret. I want to teach you something powerful. If you are in ministry, never fight your sons. A father that fights his sons loses his honor. A son that fights his father loses his life. There are punishments allocated for the various offenses. Every time you see God lifting a man, join to lift it. If the last move of God always fights the next move of God, chances are that when we are in the program of God and a shift begins to happen, and God begins to raise other voices. The, the threat of feeling irrelevant begins to make people to not want to partner with what God is doing. And they now begin to fight it. And you cannot fight what is of God. You will go down. And so they go down together with it. Do you know why David's name still remained relevant? Lord, you will not allow me to build the temple. You said I've shed innocent blood. I would have been offended and David's name would have gone down. But he said, no, Solomon, I will gather the materials for you. Build the house. I will gather the material. Everybody who partnered with everything God was doing also remained relevant. That was the wisdom of the woman with the alabaster box. I'm a prostitute. I mean, I don't have a name. But Jesus, can I partner with your relevance? And Jesus said, anywhere they talk about me, this woman too, her story will be remembered. There are people all across this nation and all across the earth who by either because their assignment has come to an end or their lack of spiritual alignment has edged them out of God's program. Once upon a time, they were at the epicenter of God's program. But either because of pride or disalignment or just the assignment coming to end. You know why Billy Graham remained relevant? He knew when he had served his generation and he created a legacy institute. And all he was doing till he died was lifting all those who it was their generation. And although he's dead, he has been immortalized through his ability to lift men. Same thing with my dear mentor, eternally, Dr. Miles Monroe. He died, but his books brought him back to life. He said, body, you can be laid to rest. Mind, stand up and keep speaking. Miles Munro is still alive. His body is in the grave. But his mind is still in us. We have kept him alive. Because he saw a generation. One of the last books that he wrote before he died was passing it on. The mystery. Not everybody will be relevant for our generation. Once upon a time, Papa E.A. Adeboye grew with a generation and today he's old with that generation. No matter how prophetic you are, 
your mother would prefer to listen to Papa Idi Adeboye than you. I said it in Lagos that even if I cut a human head and throw it down and carry it up and fix it back to show how powerful I am, an old woman will look at me and say, wow, young man, I'm impressed. Let me go to redemption camp quickly. I'll see you later. Because even if they come for this program, you were not sent to that generation. The voice that grew with that generation is the voice that represents the purposes of God to them. Listen, demons know this. Occultists know this. Believers do not know how to grow with a generation such that you become a dimension of God. The four faces at the throne represented different dimensions of God. What I am teaching you tonight will keep you relevant because by the time you are established in this kingdom, your generation will know you to be the face of something about God to them. Every time you talk of prosperity, we go to some Adeyemi for his generation. When you talk about faith and signs and wonders, am I not a man of faith? But you see, our parents will not come to me as that reference. I didn't grow with that generation to represent that dimension of God. I'm teaching you how you cannot be erased in the purposes of God. You want to stay relevant? It's more than making money. You must represent a dimension of God to a generation and grow with them knowing you to represent that. By the time they are established, they will educate themselves to look up to you by grace as a revelation of that dimension. Who is the Samadeyemi of our generation? Who is the Bishop Oyedeko of our generation? Who is the Papa Iya Deboy of our generation? Who is the WF Kumuyo of our generation? Who is the Apostle Babalola of our generation? It's not just giving yourself titles, I'm Apostle, nonsense, I'm, I'm Prophet, rubbish. That's not the issue. It's about staying. It is your generation that will call you, not you. The Bible said they shall call you. The reward for being branded to represent a dimension of God is the name they call you. Are we together? Some of us, your ministries right now have a lot of small children and teenagers and you are embarrassed because you are hoping that rich millionaires of 60 years will start coming to your church. You better thank God for sending a generation for you to grow with them. Are we together? I remember years ago when he and I started, there were a lot of young people, students all around, and people would just look at it like a children's Sunday school class. And I said, oh dear. Those people that are children are now workers scattered all around. You see that? If Papa Ia Deboe says all believers in Nigeria fast for three days, whether you're a member of Redeem or not, you are going to fast. If your pastor said don't fast, you just respect him and pass and say nonsense. You just started a church two years ago and you are telling me to disobey a man. He has represented the voice of God, not just to Nigeria, but to the world, contending for kingdom relevance. I will never lead a group of people who are anointed and not relevant. I have studied the systems of the kingdom and I have studied the limitation of the ignorance of anointed men of God. Men and women of God, especially in this nation, are very ignorant when it comes to the strategies for kingdom advance. The scope of our relevance is building individual capacities to love God. But the strategy for kingdom advance is seldom understood. And our generation is at the mercy of a bridge, a repairer of the bridge. Otherwise, we will have very heavy spiritual capacities and lose a voice territorially. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Five keys. Let me not waste your time. Straight to the point. Five keys. You want to serve your generation? Please, I want you to listen very carefully. To become influential enough 
to establish the purposes of the purposes of God within a generation number one you must know God you must know God you want to serve the purposes of God you must know God not you may know God not you can know God you must have an encounter with God Daniel chapter 11 verse 32 the Bible ties exploits even within a generation to the knowledge of God are we together it says such as do wickedly against the covenant he shall corrupt by flatteries he said but the people that do know they are God they are God let me tell you what that means to know God is not just to know the general God you must know the God revealed to your generation if you are in Jacob's generation and you know the God of Abraham alone you will not be relevant in Jacob's generation every generation has a dimension of God revealed to it whoever finds that dimension is the person who becomes relevant within that context are we blessed but the people that do know their God they shall be strong and shall do exploits listen to me in this kingdom it is your fraternity with the spirit realm that culminates to your dominion and your victory ask any great man if they are honest enough they will tell you there is a certain level in this kingdom and in the world today you cannot rise beyond without a fraternity with the realm of the spirit whether in business in ministry listen carefully career whatever it is If you ever see anyone commanding any dimension of superior results whether through occultism whether in the it's secular or whatever i can tell you beyond the secular knowledge and all of those things a time came in their lives when they became assisted by the realm of the spirit for 30 years jesus as the word the living logos was powerless but when the holy ghost came upon him that partnership turned him into Christos, the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. You must know God. You must know God. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23 to 24. Please give it to us quickly. Jeremiah chapter 9. Thus saith the Lord, not an angel, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom our generation has many wise men who are poor many wise men who are broke many wise men who are not relevant at all the bible says first things first he didn't say wisdom is not important let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not the mighty man glory in his might let not the rich man glory in his riches 24 but let him that glorieth glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me that's the pride of the believer your the foundation of your confidence in life should never be because of the car that is parked outside because of the food that is on your table because of your degree that is in your drawer are we together all those things only make sense when you are centrally connected to God those who will be relevant in these end times those who will defy the operation of demons those who will defy the causes and the yokes of culture those who will defy all the manipulations of darkness they are not just well-meaning people but those who know their God understand it and know it me are we blessed you go and prescribe this to someone who wants to be great and see how he will frown at you he won't exactly hate it he will just smile and be angry because he believes that when you want to be great just teach him business principles do this do that quickly you want to be great oh let me teach you on book publishing book publishing is the art of a that gives b this to c all those things are rubbish if you don't know god 
one yoke from your village can rewind your success is all you are you are you are laboring for nothing the bible says it is vain to wake up in the morning hear me nigerians wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow that's why many hard-working people are angry they look at life and say it's not fair and you are right i was a graduate since 1961 and i've not built a house now and look at all these small 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 boys sorry for you the foundation of relevance for every generation is not just your connection to god but your knowledge of god when last did you ever see this being prescribed as a formula for greatness and please those of you here who are into personal development and the rest is wonderful when you are teaching the secular you go ahead but when you are mentoring people let the foundation of growth be the realm of the spirit are we together you know you talk like this and a lot of people believe that you don't know what you're saying you don't know anything about secular success you're wrong you're wrong you must know God Jacob had an encounter with God a nation has never been named after you a nation has never been named after your father and my father listen carefully a nation has never been named even after your president there is I'm not sure of any nation in the world that has been named after a man so when a man is so relevant that God's nation is named after him study how he rose up like that the foundation was not intelligence the foundation was an encounter Genesis chapter 28 when you read from 11 to 17 he lighted upon a place and lay down on a stone to sleep and the Bible says when you begin to read down to 17 that a ladder was connecting the earth to heaven listen very carefully and then at the top of it give us verse uh, let's see verse 13 or 14 and listen behold the Lord stood above it let's hear what God is saying God said I am the God of who God himself is calling himself the God of Abraham so it's not something men are calling God himself called himself not I am the king of kings I am the God of Abraham I am the God of Isaac stop no other person had been interested in knowing me enough to add to the list that means it was never supposed to just stop as the God of Israel I am the God of Abraham the God of Isaac I am the God of Jacob uh -huh. I am the root of David David added himself I am this and that then Joshua Selman too comes to add himself so that our children when you say I'm not saying you should say the God of Joshua Selman I'm just teaching you how it is when you say the God of Joshua Selman it's not the same as the God of Abraham I don't know what Abraham saw I don't know what what his business was with God but there is a dimension you hear the people say the God of our fathers had appeared to me at that time Jacob had not yet been in the list he says the land where out thou will this and that and that and that and then Jacob woke up in the morning and said the Lord was in this place and I knew not how terrible he said this is the house of God the gates of heaven the next encounter will be in chapter 32 and verse 22 please give it to us we are reading down to 30 chapter 32 from verse 22 22 32 22 chapter 32 and verse 22 let me read it from here chapter 32 and verse 22 and he rose up that night Jacob now and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over forth Jabbok 23 we're reading to 30 and he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had 24 
and Jacob was left alone. Jacob got to a point where everything that represented his relevance, he had to give it away. Wives go, possessions go, everything go. And when he was alone, the reason why many of us may never encounter God is because there are many things together with us. Your money is still there. Your house is still there. Every other thing is there. But when you are left alone, it says, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. 25. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the strongest part. That means you have been strong by yourself without me. I see that you so love your degree to a point that every time I say I'm lifting you, you smile and say it's because I'm an engineer. Of course I should be lifted. It's because I'm a doctor. It's because I'm an architect. Lord, I know that contract and God's touched that area and said it may not always be by what you call strength. It is by my strength. And the hall of Jacob's tie was out of joint. And he wrestled with him. 26. And he said, let me go god now for the day breaketh and he said jacob may that be someone's testimony oh, that you say lord in this generation i don't just want to be a story i will hold on to you and people say look everybody is getting a job oh, everybody is moving and you say just leave me may god bless you but lord i cannot leave this place you see many graduates make a foolish mistake the moment they write their last exam they pour mineral on their head and joke around and play around tap water and immediately they are done they carry their bag and run and join the queue of confusion where you should stay back and have a two weeks retreat and lie down near one tree and say lord i'm not leaving this place until i f what will i tell my generation that I went to school for five years? Is that enough to give you a voice? I entered somewhere in Abuja and the receptionist had three MSCs. Receptionist, three MSCs. I said, if you come to this place and it's grammar you want to talk, you will be a foolish person. Three, two of them were abroad and then one in the country. Receptionist. Don't think it's a small place. A salary can, let me just keep quiet. No, don't don't think reception is like you are thinking one small kiosk. No, that's a place where only kings enter. And I said, my God, you need more in this life. Brothers and sisters, I'm not teaching you to be lazy. But I'm telling you that if you want to command a voice, you can carry your first class degree and get a job and meet somebody who was the son of a herbalist who also got the job with you. And they say we are considering someone for promotion and he's laughing at you already. He's pitying you because he knows. One week to the promotion interview, your leg refuses to move from your bed. And you come to the office and he says, well, just to let you know that. You had me, you had that day. Say my father is a herbalist. <laughs> the wicked world that we live in. I know someone who was promoted. True story sat down on his chair for the first time and died on the chair there they went to consult all kinds of people some habali says his wife that killed him some other habali says the guy that mops the the office that killed him it doesn't matter he's dead he's dead who killed you it's not a, you are dead can you know god to a point that someone is concocting a charm the first portion he drops fire response fire and says no no there are some touch notes ah, ah. he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm listen something happened i think it was last week one of our dear ones some of these touts these boys around that catch people collect phones and the rest and i got to hear that one of our dear ones as he went home he was whether he was on his way going home or he went home i think he went home and then went to get something or so afterwards that some of these scouts these guys just attacked him they attacked him collected phone this they caught him like this with a knife like a ram 
They showed it to me when I was in Lagos over the over the, the, the week. I just came back today. And then when I saw it, I was just laughing. I allowed them the protocol and the rest to shut the door. I got down on my knees. I said, Lord, except I am not anointed. The person who did this thing. Listen, when I said that by evening, they had caught them. They are right now as you call Alex outside the police now right now do you know how they caught them they after that prayer the guy now went to go and waylay somebody he didn't know he was a police officer then they caught him and packed all the phones and the phone they picked was the guy's own they called and his friend was with him in the hospital as it is today they are carrying him to the hospital to identify him and only God knows what they will do for him Do you know God that much that the bowing of your knees can manipulate anything in the earth realm? See, let me tell you, if you don't understand this, most times you would think people are boasting. When someone says, I will pray for you, you've heard that thing? I will pray for you. Does it pray for us? So, because you know his prayer is powerless. But there are people, if they say they will pray for you, rejoice. They are not using your faith. He said, for this cause, I, Paul, bow my knees to the Father. I'm praying for your sake. Ah! Jesus prayed for us. So, John 17, he prayed for us. When I was coming, the military people came to greet me. I said, please, you people should use those boys to teach people in this area. That there are still apostolic and prophetic voices we are not just acting nonsense here and then all kinds of young boys just go and continue oppressing people what devil what nonsense i'm saying it again let me announce across this territory that any gentleman any lady whether you are here or not that gets up to manipulate people boggle their house i command the earth to fight them from tonight That some of them will go to bed and lie down and not wake up. The territory should know that God has voices. It's not by coming on TV and making noise. Elijah said there shall be no rain. We need to sanitize this spiritual environment. Halagbara <laughs> by the mighty God. Hey, everything about God you just need to know the dimension of him revealed to you I don't boast of knowing everything about God there are some things about God I totally don't know but let me tell you there are dimensions of God that he has shown me by his grace your pursuit if you want to be relevant to a generation you must know these dimensions of God going to church is not enough are you hearing what I'm saying? Praying and fasting is not knowing God. There are only tools to help you know God. One of the major reasons why people don't know God is they don't give Him time. Be careful with this, I'm busy, I'm busy. You need to give God time to know Him. Our generation, we pray, we fast, we sing, we go to church. But we are unwilling to give God time to know him. If you see people doing three days fast, there's fire on the mountain. Real fire on the mountain. Lord, where are you? Then the fire goes down and you leave him. That you sit down and say, Lord, I want to know you. What message do I have to my generation? You must know God. 
I'm challenging every one of us here. Please tell yourself the truth and stop allowing people to just clap for you and say, Wow, prayer warrior. Wow, fasting giant. Wow, word, word, revelation, signs, signs and wonders producer. And you move around fooling yourself that you know God. And life tests you and there is nothing about God that you know. He says that I may know him. Pray one minute and say, Lord, reveal yourself. Reveal yourself to me, O oh God, that I may know you. Lord, I'm tired of ordinary Christianity without power. Show me your glory. Show me your grace. Shibakuroto suprahati asalabarati. Hallelujah. There are things you must know about God. There are things I know about men. Um. I used to have one, I, I, I cannot, I can't remember who exactly, but there used to be one gentleman years ago, I used to tease him. He looked very powerless as a man, but you don't see any power, you can almost shake him. And I said, if they ever tell me you fought somebody, I won't believe because I know you. I know you enough to know you are not even strong to lift a sizable chair. So if somebody tells you that that guy finished beating one police officer, you just laugh and say, except the anointing came on him. There was something David knew about God that made him stand before Goliath. We stand and face the challenges in life based on the knowledge of God that we have. The armies of Israel had the same weapons that David would later hold, but they could not confront Goliath. There was something Goliath too knew. He was not just big. Goliath was not the only giant in the land. Even among the Israelites, they were also giants. But they stood and Goliath was roaring, wicked man. And David said, don't mind him. Carry the sling. He said, I'm going to remove this, your head. You will fall down. I will use your sword, cut it and feed the birds. Goliath said, am I a dog? He said, you will soon know. When he wound that thing, it was not just his hand winding it. There was an anointing. And he hit Goliath once. Goliath himself was shocked that he fell. There was something Joshua, oh bless his name Joshua, knew about God. And he said, go round, don't mind all this big mountain for nothing. Notice that all the challenges are usually very big. Jericho, Goliath, Red Sea. So don't be surprised when yours is big. Why will you expect it to be small? How then will God be glorified? 25 years barrenness. Are we together? There is something you need to know about God. That you will stand before a generation. And they'll say, Ma, it's two years and you are not pregnant yet. He said, just wait. And all of a sudden, by the third year, triplets will come. Nine years in three years. And they'll come and say, ah, you just gave birth. I didn't give birth. I manifested miracles. Don't call that is not delivery. You go and try it. If you get triplets, show me the science of producing triplets. I know something about God. Where someone threatens you and says, in this office, they bow to me to rise. If you are not willing to bow to me with honorarium of one million and then respect, you are not rising. No. And everybody above you will say, just this guy is connected to the presidency and he said all right sir may god bless you and you go back in the night and do something that will make that man call you in a hurry and sign your document and you say just just for starters to let you know that there are men and there are men are we together someone plants a charm to kill you 
and he's sleeping in his room the charm meets him there physically again charm said you sent me and somebody changed my direction and brought me to the same place I remember years ago one of our lady went to meet a herbalist in this place this this one a herbalist for something like that she kept giving him money was concocting a charm for something and then the last one now he now asked for an honorarium of thirty thousand. i said her or he, he now started calling her number you better come and fulfill your this you have made me start the charm true story you will run mad and she now ran to me came and confessed his pressure a and b and c happened i said warn that herbal is so my concern is not the charm it's his life tell him that he should check in the realm of the spirit will just happen without sacrifice restoration will cost you you will have to provoke your faith a seed is not just money a seed is a sacrifice of something that costs it's a proof that you love God whenever what you have is about to finish there is a system to refill it again in this case he demanded sacrifice of her listen a sacrifice in the realm of the spirit automatically brings whoever is doing it into a covenant with God. Psalm 50 verse 5, it says, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This is why many believers never experience restoration. Why will you as a man of God come and meet a woman? Please, brothers and sisters, I want you to reason this. You look at someone who is about to dry, nothing is happening in her life, and then you are asking her to sacrifice something. Jesus was having a crusade. He was the organizer and the conveyor of the crusade. And then he said, go and feed the people, and there was nothing. And then... Andrew found a young lad. You would call it bullying. Our generation knows how to abuse words. You would even call it an abuse. Collected the boy's loaf and bread, his lunchbox, and took it to Jesus. And said, This is what we've been able to find. And Jesus said, Fine. I thought Jesus had bad. So, such a harsh and wicked adult. You mean you bully this? Go and return it back. I am love. But Jesus said, That's it. Have you always wondered who had the remaining 12 baskets? The boy was willing to sacrifice a moment of satisfaction to create something. Many believers do not know how to sacrifice now to smile. This is a principle that does not just go to seeds alone. Sacrificing the convenience logs you today so that you can carry an anointing and a grace that will be able to speak tomorrow. Sacrificing today to discipline yourself and learn the principles that will make you successful. You want to experience restoration and indeed it's a principle that applies to many mysteries in the spirit. Sacrifice. A few minutes ago you were shouting and now Koinonia is quiet. Why? Because it's a reflection of your unwillingness to part with things today and gain them tomorrow. If you want to be great, listen to me. If you want to defy the limitation that comes with this system, get used to this language. Sacrifice. You will always give up something to go up. You won't hold what you have and still rise. The lighter you are, the higher you fly. Are we together? Sacrifice. Praise can be a sacrifice. Your seed can be a sacrifice. Your service in the house of God can be a sacrifice. Your honor to the vessels of God can be a sacrifice. You want to experience restoration. Listen, let me teach you something powerful about restoration. The blessing is not in what you have lost. The blessing is in what you have left. There's a very strange story in the Bible. I think it's in the book of Hosea or Amos. That a shepherd was trying to rescue a lamb that had been eaten by a lion 
the lion so ate the lamb that there was nothing left only one ear and two legs that was all that was left yet the shepherd still ran to still rescue the lamb what will you do with one ear and two legs eating the intestines eating all of this but in the realm of the spirit it is not what left you that is the issue it is what you have left what you have left is a sign that god is still interested in restoration that's why everything did not go are you hearing what i'm saying most times we forget what we have left and we keep regretting oh god this one left me a relationship left you but your health is still with you that health can be the seed that will bring back another relationship your job left you but your praise did not leave you that praise can be a sacrifice that will bring another job are you getting the, the way this thing works there is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost there is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost listen let me repeat myself there is always something in your life that you have today that can bring back something you lost you had a miscarriage and you are crying and saying Lord this is the fourth miscarriage you lost the baby sad but by the grace of God you are still alive and you can speak use your health as a seed to get another child the health that you have dedicated to praising God as a seed of sacrifice apostle but I lost my father he's gone I lost my mother she's gone I lost my brother he's gone I understand and I sympathize with you deeply from the depth of my heart but you are the seed that is left use yourself and your life to gain back what your father would have been and what your mother would have been everything they would have been to you sowing that seed of sacrifice someone can appear in your life and say i may not be your biological father but i take responsibility for your life from today no strings attached there is such a possibility are we together yes they killed several children the nation of israel was under threat and a woman carried her son as a seed and put him in a river and just said lord just protect this guy and god said that son that you gave as a seed i will use him as the deliverer to preserve them whenever you are afraid of losing things you open the door for losses that which I have feared most has come upon me. There are many of us, you are so afraid of losing things that you, you fear success when it comes because you think it will not last. Anytime good things happen, you are careful. A brother comes to propose to you and you are saying, well, I said yes, but the truth is I've not said yes first. I've had 10 people break my heart. That's what happened to the woman who met Jesus. Six husbands, five men shattered her heart. The sixth one is not even her husband and Jesus came. So she was careful. And Jesus said, me, I'm not like the rest though. And gave her an encounter. She became an evangelist instantly. Went and gathered people and said, come. What of the madman at Gadara? Do you know there was a time that man had his sense back? There was a time he was born. There was a day they dedicated him. There was a day the madness started gradually until he got to that acute state where even chains could no longer hold him. He was in a cave all by himself. So when they crossed over to the other side, demons came through him, but Jesus had compassion. He was seeing a man who had potentials to be an evangelist, to win 10 cities, yet he was under that situation. And Jesus said, we can do something. Now, when you read your Bible, I don't want us to turn there, but even with those demons, the Bible says the man worshipped Jesus. The remaining 1% sense that I have, the demons are making me look like I don't recognize you, but that ounce of sanity, I sow it as a seed and I worship you. And Jesus said, all right, 
all of you people trying to mess up this guy's life, you can go places. But let this guy be restored. The Bible says they came and they found him in his perfect mind. He went to the Decapolis, 10 cities, gathered people and brought them to Jesus. The miracle is not in what you have left. I know that whilst you're sitting right now, there is a fibroid in your stomach. But can you use your mouth as the seed to take away that fibroid? Your stomach was affected, but you still have a voice. You can sing. You still have an ear. Your ear can be the seed, the sacrifice of attentiveness to listen to the word of the Lord can restore you. No man is ever helpless if you understand the mystery of seeds and sacrifices. Every time things leave you, forget about them. Focus on what you have left. Lord, I give you all the praise. I lost my job. Lost my wife. Lost my children. I'm all alone. And God says, that's all you need. You are alone with me like Jacob. Use your aloneness as a seed. Sow it and receive an encounter. An encounter that will bring them again. Job understood this. He lost everything in his life. The only thing he had was his conviction. And the wife said, lose that one too. So why are you talking like one of these foolish women? How else will it come back? Job said, though he slay me, I have lost my health, but I've not lost my voice. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Elihu and all and co were talking all kinds of nonsense. Job came listening to them. And in chapter 42, Job said, well, I may not be able to give as I used to be, but I still have my mouth. I can be an intercessor. 42 verse 10, he started interceding for his friends. And God said, this is it. He turned his life around. And God turned the captivity of Job, 42 verse 10, when he prayed for his friends. Listen, there is always something in your life that can bring back something that left you. If this is the only revelation you have tonight, you will rejoice. Go back home and stop tear all of those sheets of papers that are archives of regrets and start writing what you have left. I still have my convictions. I lost a job, but I still have my certificate. Are we together now? I lost my car, but my hands are still working well. I didn't die in the accident. And when you put all those things, you say, Lord, I laid this at the altar of sacrifice. I tell you to bring back everything and everything. Sacrifice. Number four, very quickly. The fourth key to restoration is engaging the prophetic. The fourth key to restoration engaging the prophetic specifically prophetic utterances let me show you three scriptures that will bless you tonight isaiah 42 verse 22 please give it to us media isaiah 42 verse 22 but this is a people robbed and spoiled all of them are snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and non delivered for a spoil. And there is no advocate that prophesies to them, restore. For you to ever experience restoration, there must be the introduction of the prophetic into your life. The prophetic, the prophetic. Either as an operation of the word of God or as a ministry of those anointed to walk in that respect. You have to understand what I'm teaching you. Without an encounter with a prophetic grace, a prophetic office, or a, a prophetic dimension of the word of God, there is no restoration. It's impossible. Second scripture, Psalm 119 verse 49. I found this scripture while I was studying and I felt it was very powerful and um, it would be great for us to see it. Psalm 119 verse 49. It says, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Give us an amplified. 
I want to explain to you what this scripture said. Remember fervently the word and promise to your servant in which you caused me to hope. In other words, the man of God came and told you he has a covenant with God and said God made a promise to him that when he stands and does certain things, he will hear him. And you are now saying, Lord, remember when that man of God spoke to me that something about his altar and his covenant can bring me breakthrough. I believed it. And he said, remember the word, the promise you gave your servant upon which I now hope that it will work for me. That's why sometimes you hear people say the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of Oyedipo. So there is, it's not some religious, you know, whatever it is. It is a system of invoking the personal covenant. God, aside from the Old and the New Testament, God has personal covenants with men till today. God can enter a covenant with a man, a family, because of something that was done and say, look, whoever does certain things connected to this, I will bless you. God had a covenant with Abraham. Listen. And anybody and anything that came out of Abraham. A sad story later happened. And then Ishmael came out. When Ishmael came out, the Bible says Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness. Two of them were crying. Only the voice of Ishmael was heard in heaven. Why? The Bible says God had the voice of the young lad. A child is crying. The mother is crying. Only one voice is heard in heaven. Because God said, Abraham, you and anybody and anything that comes out of you. It's not God's concern whether it was a mistake or not. He is bound to it. It is still the reason why Ishmael today can still manifest certain dimensions of the blessing. Remember. The last scripture. Second Kings. Let's look at chapter 7. Actually, the whole is, is Elisha's encounter in Samaria, chapter 6, 7. But we're looking at chapter 7. Just two scriptures. Second Kings, chapter 7. We'll read verse 1 and then we'll read verse 18. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic now. Samaria as a nation was ravaged by so much famine that the Bible says women were eating their children. Mothers, please think for a minute. Think of roasting the leg of your child and watching it roast and yet not being afraid. I've heard of people drinking their urine because of test, but I've not heard of people eating their children. So Nigeria's recession is not as bad as it was here. The Bible says women, as compassionate as they were, were eating the same children. Eating your child is like eating yourself. The child came out of you. It's the same thing as cutting yourself and eating it. And this is what happened. And the prophet came and said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. He said tomorrow. About this time. Shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel. In the gate of Samaria. Look at me. Let me teach you something profound. The miracle. This tomorrow. Was not something God revealed to the prophet. And said that's what I want to do. The, uh, the prophet chose the date. When that land will be delivered. Listen. This is not revelation. He didn't say God revealed to me. In other words I'm just giving you a superior information. There is a difference between revelation and creation. Revelation just gives you a prior knowledge of what is there anyway. Creation makes it appear and manifest. Like the testimony of our dear lady. Who goes to her room and sees piles of money. Physical cash. Now that's creation. Revelation is I can stand here and say there is a brown envelope in your room. Go and check it. I didn't put it there. I only help to guide you so you go and find it. This prophet was not creating. This prophet, I mean he was not revealing. He was creating. He says, look, I understand that part of the privileges of prophetic ministry is to appoint to people dates. The realm of the spirit has events without dates tied to them. It takes the prophetic to appoint dates. That's why through the prophetic ministry you can go into 
to five years ago did an event that would have been your testimony that was corrupted through witchcraft and fast forward it and appoint a date in your future to make it happen you have to believe this otherwise how does God restore years are we together now is only subject to this realm the realm of the spirit is a compendium of happenings that are manipulated by the will of God and the intelligence of citizens on the earth who know how to make it happen so there are events that represent the will of God there are certain dimensions of his will that are fixed according to his predeterminate counsel but there are others that are flexible left to the intelligence of the saints such as your miracle today it's not God that decided that today will be your miracle you would have chosen to remain at home Jesus was passing a city called Nain are we Bible students it was never his plan to raise any dead body he was minding his business he was not on evangelism and he saw people crying and then he said what's going on here and they said there is a woman ravaged by witchcraft her husband that dead her only son dead and Jesus said wait a minute bring down that coffin there and then he decided the destiny of that woman brothers and sisters hear me this issue of one day one day is faithlessness you can insist the Bible said today if you hear his voice you can choose and say Lord today today I'm tired of this hangover of nonsense around my life today is the day your faith can turn it around and bring you a miracle you believe that say amen listen you are the only one who continues to progress in time the realm of the spirit does not progress in time the time is bare are we together now so in the realm of the spirit you don't there's no such thing as past and present with god so when you say god remember five years ago you said you would do something and you did not do it god said it doesn't make any difference it can still happen and you say lord but i'm older now god says and so i can readjust it to still fit the older you lord you gave me a word that i will marry at 21 i'm 35 and god says no problem i can't do it lord i plan to have six children god said it doesn't make any difference six years two two years with twins my word has come to pass lord you said you would prosper me but this has not happened i would have gotten a job how much was the salary that time Twenty thousand. how much would you have had now 1.2 god says i give you an idea that brings you 2.4 in one month Listen. please you have to believe what i'm telling you otherwise we're wasting our time here is powerful it can appoint dates for spiritual events and cause them to be made manifest you've seen this happening going on here somebody will write jam for instance and have 160 something and all of a sudden a word will come and you go and check it again and see 260 something how do you explain that someone writes an exam and just remembers writing his name alone on question one and then comes and the word comes and result comes out and is in 4.8 how oh, please brothers and sisters we are intelligent people but we are also spiritual never allow your intelligence take away the place of the realm of the spirit in your life the same way you are seated here and say apostle can god do it brothers and sisters he can look at my life look at this ministry the word of god can god cure that sickness yes he can i repeat yes he can can god turn around my captivity some of you are not sick but what is wrong with you is better sickness than that problem god can still turn it around god can turn it around in the name of jesus god can turn it around the lord declared and said i shall announce to us that this miracle service is dedicated towards restoration i truly believe every word of god and i believe that one of the things god is going to be doing tonight is to call back things compress time for people call back things please believe it believe it i am a testimony i've seen god bless people overnight overnight ha, he said rejoice
is not over me, my enemies. Sometimes life can whip you to a point where you look up and say, God, I have served you. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't rob anybody. Why is my life like this? Then God tells you, locate the power of prophecy. Locate the power of prophecy. Some of you didn't want to come tonight. You can come and still look and say, wow, what an interesting service. Or you can come and pray. say, Lord, it is within your power to change this situation. Why should we pro prolong it? It's within your power. It's within your power. You've seen the testimonies. We never announce anything here that is not verified. You've seen all the great testimonies. No matter what is wrong with your life, your ministry has crashed down. You were once on fire and once anointed and something happened. You can't tell what it is, but that grace and that unction doesn't look like it's there again. You are preaching and even you, you know you are not blessing anybody. Again, like the hair of Samson, it can come back again. My help, my help, my help. My father has died. My mother has died. I'm an orphan. There's no one to take care of me. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There are many fathers and mothers. Prophecy just needs to bring two of you together. Tonight, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you will be amazed to see the way the Lord will turn your life around. Turn your life around. Apostle, I was pregnant. Now I'm seated here and my baby cannot even move. He's dead. Just give me a few minutes and watch a miracle that will bring tears from your eyes. I believe God. I am one man of God that believes God can turn around any situation. It will always be like The Lord will perfect that concerning me. Soon or He'll turn in my favor turn in around me Don't cry as if jobs are finished A job is not with any government A job is in the word of God Listen to me Don't cry No Stop that tears It's a weep not When the book is open Tears will stop God didn't gather you here. Some of you traveled so far. There are some of you standing in the, in the rain, standing outside. God is too faithful to come and waste your time. In the next few minutes, I want you to believe this. Please listen, listen. Don't be part of those. Now is not the time to pinch around and hope. Will God do it? Apostle, I lost money. Apostle, I lost joy. Apostle, I lost a job. They blackmailed me. able to restore and let me tell you something god can restore fast he can restore fast 430 years in captivity one night god said that's all when god arises el gibor the mighty man when he shakes himself and stands up and says i want to leave david down let me tell you i don't care what which way i have seen god lift people who were not even prepared I ju he just chose that i want to make a specimen with this person it doesn't take time it doesn't take time we're about to pray I came here with all my heart, believing that God will restore somebody. If you belong to any of these categories, except you've not lost anything, you can see now. But if you know there is something in your life that you know must come back, I'm not saying may come back, it's not a discussion. lost my joy, can come back. I've lost my peace, can come back. I lost my husband. God can fetch him wherever he is and return him. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to pray.
time for a few minutes, it will be very fast. I don't plan to waste our time here. We are going to be very fast. The message is already complicated. It's not when I start ministry. As soon as we start praying, I like you. Please, if you have never believed a man of God in your life, why don't you do this? Just, just be childlike for once and say, Lord, I believe the word of your servant. I open up my heart. I want you to open your mouth and call things back into your life. Call opportunities. This atmosphere is anointed. Call. is still in the earth.
pastors and see shoes in the realm of the spirit and the Lord is telling me people will wear them now this is sign of restoration too Lord where are they let it happen now there is a grace for performance grace for performance please bring them out quickly please ushers you should know this we are saving time please quickly he says grace for performance right now in the name of Jesus
wanting to relieve itself in your present. You think about your failure of primary school. Now you are a graduate, but it has still sponsored your lack of confidence. In the name that is above all things, one more time I pray. Anyone here still connected to his past? I come in the name of Jesus, the one whom I serve. I provoke an anointing from heaven. Right now in the 
the name of Jesus, may that fire come upon you now and bring you breakthrough. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Nothing is working. I cause it. I cause the spirit. I cause the power. I cause the influence that is making this happen. In the name of Jesus. Bring them out. It's a very serious prayer. I'm still praying. Nothing is working. It's not like you are not moving. But it works for others till it gets to your tongue. Simple things that should open up, don't open up. Right now in the name of Jesus, I direct an unction to your life and destiny. And I command you now, in the name of Jesus, by the ministry of the Spirit, be free from this evil. Be free from this evil. There is a family and the family people are here. belong to this category I'm talking about. Nothing is working. Huh? Even finances is the grace of God. Where are you coming from? Um, hold on. Please help that the ushers to help them. Are you Yoruba? You are Yoruba? Yes, sir. From Akure State? Yes, Where are you from? Ondo no, no State. Ondo is what? This one that is Akure or Ondo. That's what. You are coming from Akure. Yes. And because I'm seeing a car and that's where you are coming from. Yes. Where are you coming from now? Akure. That's what I'm saying. Yes. The Lord is going to change your life totally. Right now. Who is Lekho? Listen, just one touch from the Lord to change your story, lift your hands. They come, overflow, he's in the overflow, where are you? Please stand up, my brothers, stand up. What's your name? Lekon, sir. From where? Ekiti State, sir. Stand here, your life is about to change. Look at him, sir. The Lord will do you a miracle. Wearing this, this lime thing, God is not done with you. I've seen an angel pouring oil on her. This one's standing. Huh? Help her. God is not done. I'll come to you shortly. We're going to do this very fast. Hopefully, before, by the grace of God, between now and the end of the day, we'll convert one of the miracle service to a vigil. It's not just prayer. By God's grace, I will trust God for grace to prophesy upon our lives. I will go section by section, inside and outside. Prophecy is powerful when it's done with understanding. It can wipe your tears in one minute. Lift your hands. You are laid up. Is it Augustus? Yes, Augustus or Augustus. Something that has been Augustus. Augustus or something. Augustus. I'm hearing like Augustus. Please, we have to finish fast because we have to pray for the city. Augustus. Change the story. Jesus. Something just left you. You are sick. That sickness has gone now. In the name of Jesus. My brother, you don't make it in life by hustling. You make it in life by divine direction. This is what God is saying. What's your name? 
just bring them, but the name I hear is Augustus, but I will pray for you something, Augustus. My brother, hold my hands. This is not about hustling. Huh? It's not moving around. It's walking circumspectly by the Spirit and in grant you grace. Hold my hands. The Lord will wipe your tears in the name of Jesus. I bring this oppression to an end. That man holding pictures, run, come. Your breakthrough has come. Run, run, come. Stand here, where are you coming from? I'm looking at you. You are not in Zaria. From Kano State. You are from Kano State. Who is this? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking at your picture. My mom. What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. She gave me something for you. Your mom is sick. You don't know something is wrong with her. Hold on, please. If they are manifesting, just leave them there. Please, let's be fast. I want to pray for you. Hold on. Who is this one? She's my sister too. This is your sister? Yes. If I don't pray, I'm seeing this girl inside the coffin. Where is she? She's in Kano. Is she well? Yes. She's well. Yes. We have to pray for her. One of your sisters is sick. Yes. Sir. Is that true? Yes, Where sir. is she? She's in Kano. She's in Kano. The same thing happening to that one is about to happen to this one. Do I know you? That's what I'm telling you. God wants to change this thing now. You are a sincere person. Now what do you do? I'm a banker, sir. You are a banker. I will pray for you so that they will not cause trouble and steal money and you in your group. There's already trouble. Yes, Is yes, that sir. true? Yes, sir. In your office. Yes, sir. And if I don't pray for you, they are going to sack you by August. I want to pray for you. Correct, sir. You're August. Correct, sir. That's what correct, stand up. That's what correct, they told sir. Hold it. If I don't pray for you by August, you are leaving at once. But there is a God. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. Come, sir. I don't know you, and I don't know how your mother got to know me, but your mother loves me with all her heart. Is that true? Yes, sir. I want you to tell your mother that her son is blessing her from his heart. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. I'll pray for you, sir. Huh? Because people have to be careful. There is a group, this bank group. All of you have problems. They are going to make you to pay some amount of money that is missing. And they are going to drive all of you. You need the mercy of God. Huh? Yes, and for your sister, this is witchcraft. God is coming in to step in. You are a very nice person to come in. In the name of Jesus. The same thing God is delivering you from is what is delivering the person shouting there. Let it turn now. I lay my hands upon you. Ugechuku. Is it Ugechuku or Ugechuku or something? In the name of Jesus, I speak favor. Sir, look at me. As I laid my hands on you, I saw you climbing a ladder. Watch this. This is how you will stand here in Koinonia to testify. Listen. I want everybody to look at this brother very well. Know his face. Because he's going to come and stand here and testify of a dramatic breakthrough that God is bringing to his life. Is it Ugochuku or Ugochuku? Which of you came from Southern Kaduna? You come and stand. Your miracle has come. Jesus. Stand up, sir. What do you do? Watch with attention. Careful. Federal Medical Center. Yes, careful. I want to pray for you. If God were to do one thing for you, what will it be? You're a wise man. I want to pray for you. God is going to lift you. Do you know that the hand of God is upon your life? Not just for like hand of God, even to tell people about Jesus Christ. There is an evangelistic grace on yes. your life. Yes. God has revealed it to you. Yes. You know it. I've been doing that. I was together in your program uh, in soup. Two days program you came at Cape. Oh, you were there at the, the, at yes, the meeting. You were the part meeting. of the committee people yeah. there. Yeah. Because I see a man that God will use greatly in outreaches. Yeah. I'm seeing signs and wonders. God will use you greatly. So I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let an anointing, something will come upon you now. I tell you, you will rise up from this night and begin to walk miracles like you held the champ. Receive that grace right now. In the name of Jesus, the same thing is happening to that person. I release that grace. I activate your spirit, man, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Come. There is a spirit troubling this brother. Stand up. Come. Lift your hands. Let him go now. Out. In the name of Jesus Christ. He came to receive impartation. What you need is deliverance first. There is a, a spirit that is oppressing you. Mama, can I talk to you, ma? Please. Where are you coming from, madam? Abuja. You believe that God is going to change your story. In the name of Jesus, you will. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand because the Lord said, I should bless you. The Lord said, I should bless you. There is, I'm seeing, I'm seeing one. Kai. The Lord is showing me the vision of a lady. I'm looking at this table and I'm seeing, I'm not seeing a table. I'm seeing a lady. You are wearing like blue, a blue cloth with her tie. You are crying now, cleaning your tears. And you are asking the Lord that I will locate you. You are inside here. No, you are wearing blue. is coming. You wore something. Who is that? You tied your head with. Madam, run and come. You are the one I'm talking about. I will pray for you. Look at me. Where were you sitting? Where, was she inside here? Yes, sir. Where, is, where are you coming from? Kemi State. I'm going to pray for you. He said, I should tell you that he's bringing captivity to an end in your life this night. Captivity to an end. You believe it? Let it be yours now. The power of the Holy Spirit. My sister, look at me. Shame and reproach. I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Hold my hands. Let shame and reproach leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ.
this children look small here but i'm saying hold on hold on they are here one is who is this one these ones are your children i'm looking at this one is she married she is married because i'm seeing a ring and i'm seeing a ring but i'm not hearing the sound of a child and the lord is saying a child should come now two years two years two years where is the person come call the person's name now huh? no children two years no children we are going to pray she's not here this is your son. He's the one here in the Okay, you're standing for them. Mama, why should you give birth to children and not see your grandchildren? Somebody shout, no way. Shout it again, no way. The Bible says you will see your children's children. That's scriptures. It didn't say you will see them on your deathbed. You will see them and dance and rejoice with them. Mama, do you believe if I pray for this lady now? She will come back and testify here with the child. I believe in Jesus' name. It will happen. You believe. What's her name? Her name is Adama Isa. Adama. Adama. In the name of Jesus, become pregnant. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This one. Yeah, meet him. This is the one. No, no, I'll pray for him. This one is again. Peter. Back sometimes. Diabetes. Oh, I will pray for you. You have fibroid. Yes. You have diabetes. Yes. You have ulcer. Yes, sir. What does this look like? You see how the devil is? Fibroid, diabetes, ulcer. A woman like this, then her own children, barrenness. Then this one. There's no speed in your life. Come and stand here. You are you that you are the gentleman. There's serious retrogression. I have to pray for you. Huh? You love God, but you are not moving forward at all. I have to pray for you. Is that true, Mama? Okay. Okay. Repeating, repeating. That's what I'm saying. It's not moving forward. Yes, sir. You believe in the message I just preached that God is a restorer. I believe. My Jesus. Mother, it's not that you are lazy. There is a spirit that manipulates your results. You have been repeating forever. I have to pray for you. Lift your hands. You are the one I will start with first. Father, let me end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on your mind and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit to have the mind of Christ. Right now, over. Mama, that's it. It's over in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children. Pray for this. Where is he? House yes. we, we are from Ladon State. We live in Kano. Mumta and Bokos. Okay. In Aike, she made it. Yeah, no, no, no. We have to pray for him. Because I'm seeing a serious spirit of delay in his life. We have to pray for him. And I'm seeing he's having problem already with his wife. No, no, sir. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you. Mama, let me pray for you. All sad that diabetes, fibroid, and um, and and ulcer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every single one of them, help her, let it go now. The same way it came, let it go. Every house has an entry and exit. Let this be the exit of this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. God is removing fiber from someone's stomach. Now, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, I'm seeing this. I command it now. I command it now to happen. Those malignant groups, I command it now in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. A loud shout is going to be someone with that loud shout. That's the end of it. It goes now. Never to be told. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Before we pray for the sick, I want to challenge every strange spirit that is responsible for sabotaging the purposes of God in your life. Lift your hands. As I minister deliverance to you, it doesn't mean you are possessed. No, no. The operations of demons is such that they can take advantage of mechanisms, provisions in the realm of the spirit to manipulate people. I want to pray for you. I have to do this before we start praying for the sick. Inside, outside, I want you to be ready. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, 
anyone under the influence of any spirit, please get ready and pray. I see mighty deliverances happening. Any strange spirit in this place that is tying down the destiny of anyone, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. One, two, three. I command you to leave now. Go now. Go now. and pray. For time's sake, you may not need to bring them out. Just, just leave them there, inside and outside so that we can call those who are sick and pray for them quickly. In the name of Jesus, I declare every influence that is attached to your family, the family that is trying to rob you right now in Jesus' name, I declare and declare fire is coming on you now. Fire is coming on you now. Fire is coming on you now. So please, go to Shalabaya. Legate, legate, legate. I cause it to its foundation. I cause it by the blood of the eternal covenant. I come tonight with the rod of the higher priesthood. And I cause it every activity of diabolism. In the name of Jesus Christ. speaks against your life in the day and in the night is speaking against you i stand here tonight in the name of jesus and i stretch my hands towards you if there is anyone inside outside under the sound of my voice who is a victim of the speakings of altars i command them to die now in the name of jesus i cause those altars they cease from functioning i cause those altars Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me pray for one lady here. Don't be embarrassed. You used to see physical rings on your hand. Physical rings. Then it will disappear. Who is that? There's someone here like that. Please quickly let me pray for you. Don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for you. The Lord just gave me a revelation. Sometimes you look at your hand and you see, you think it's a vision, rings, like ring on your hand. You started seeing it in your dreams, but now physically, sometimes you see it. Whether the person is inside or outside, except if they are under the anointing. But please, I would like to pray for that person as we pray for the sick. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. It's a very serious thing I need to pray for you. This, this madam, come. This lady, the lady wearing lime, come. I want to pray for you. Witchcraft comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a small child within the ages of maybe 1 to 11. Now as I'm praying, the power of God is going to come upon that child and the child will start manifesting. I'm seeing this is, this is some demonic, diabolic thing. I'm not saying the child is bad. I'm just showing you what the Lord is showing me. Father, wherever this child is, I pray for our children now. Whether it is an initiation, whether it is anything occultic, I'm, I decree and declare right now, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever that little child is, I command those devils to live now. I command those devils to live now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command those devils to live now. Very quickly, we are going to pray for the sick. There are so many things God is doing in the realm of the spirit. There are so many things God is doing. There is a brother the power of God is going to come on him now. Overflow to the one at the road. Please, I want you to bring him now. I want to talk to him. Overflow to. I see an angel of the Lord moving across overflow to. And the fire of God is falling on a brother. Please, I want that brother to come. 
the fire of God will suddenly fall upon that person please let him come carry him and, and bring him I want to prophesy to him I'm going to give us a prayer point now while we are praying we are going to ask people to come so that we'll pray for the sick very very quickly because I want to be able to have time to prophesy remember I spoke about restoration I want to use time to prophesy now watch this please overflow one all the overflows those who are sick in body I want you to when when we finish praying make your way to your various overflows and wait there there will be people who will come to minister healing to you we believe in the ministry of miracles God has anointed us for this purpose and by God's grace we are not too many that we cannot lay hands on people one by one and that's why we do that so that everybody will have that sense of I may not be able to lay hands on people outside but there are men and, and women of God anointed and they will be able to also minister to you praise the Lord please make sure you are sensitive outside I want to pray for that gentleman that's him ah. let it end now I stretch my hands towards you I bring it to an end there is sorrow upon sorrow on this gentleman's life the Lord is asking me to wave my hands it comes to an end now this guy is not the person no. just just leave him there at least he has received this one who is this one from outside overflow two. the person is supposed to be shouting in the name of Jesus Christ father I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit let this end I'm stretching my hands in the name of Jesus I command the power of darkness over your life and over your family to be broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ I breathe the life of God into you and I decree and declare that it comes to an end now I know there are many people here. There is a gentleman. Please. I don't do these things to disgrace people. But there is a gentleman here. Um, you are thoroughly addicted to taking. You know, you always hear me say that thing. What's the name of that thing? That codeine. But your own is not just codeine alone. It's plus. Whether smoke, um, some of these funny things. You are here and... You are tired of it, but you cannot stop. Please, where are you? Please don't waste our time. There's a gentleman that I need to pray for. Seems to me like that person is outside. Or inside. Please, if you are here, don't be embarrassed. I want to help you end this. I know there are many people, but there is a specific person God is talking to me about. Let's just flow as a Holy Spirit to speak here, please. That gentleman, I want you to come out here and I want to lay my hands and end it. You are tired of it, but you can't stop no matter what you do. That's what you spend your little money on. And this thing is crushing your life and destroying your destiny. Where are you? Let's appreciate it. Hallelujah. Listen, look at me. Jesus said, he who does not have sin should cast the first stone. When we call people like this, we don't condemn people. I love you with all my heart. The meaning of my name is the way to love. I love people. You look at this gentleman, you can see the way their lives are. You see how disorganized they are. This is the devil. If we don't pray for these people, this gentleman one day will become a father. It doesn't matter. I prophesy for one is for all. Come and join them. I want to pray for you now. Please, one minute. If you are, if you are still thinking about it, just remain there. But you are saying, "Man of God, I'm tired of this thing. You have to help me quickly. Join them. God gave a word for one, but I'm praying because we have to pray for the sick quickly." Some of you, nobody led you into it. It's a spirit that just pushed you into this thing. You love God, but this thing is killing you. I salute your courage. I don't know if I would have had the courage to come out. I salute your courage. Come. Let, I think we should honor them. Come on, Koinonia.
Jesus who does it matter? Of course it does. Of course it does. Of course it does. When I start praying, please don't come out again. If you are still coming, I want you to rush and come. Male or female, I don't care. Whether you are a male or female, it doesn't matter. I, I, I perceive that there are even ladies, male or female. Jesus is setting us free. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about it. Please come and stand quickly. Male or female, Koinonia, celebrate them. They are still coming. Let's give them one more minute. Since God is already talking to them now, let's just take advantage of the anointing here. Apostle, I don't take it all the time. Still join them. You take it. The most important thing is that you take it. Even if it's not all the time, you take it. Join them and let God help you. Look at me, brothers and sisters. I'm your friend. I love you with all my heart. Like I said, you may look at these boys. Please, let me give a disclaimer. Hold on, Mike. Be careful when you look at people's children and just point and think they are bad. These people need help. I interact with these people all the time and they will tell you they don't like it. It's a spirit. Some of them, nobody to got them into all of these things just by themselves. Some of them had dreams. Some of them had strange encounters. But my Bible says, God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Come and join. Please give them room. Honestly, let's, let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. If you are joining, come. The Bible says, for this purpose, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy. That this, this, you see, this smoking and drinking thing is a terrible thing. You carry cough syrup, snuff it till you are almost dying, pass out and come back again and still do it. And then others sell that, that leaf that they tie. You collect it, smoke it, and all of that. Look at me. I want to pray for you. And I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your coming out here does not make me better than you in any way. Are we together now? We are only, we are only benefactors of the grace and the mercy of God. I'm agreeing with you. Most people complain. Most people gossip about you. I'm not gossiping about you. I want to help you. Koinonia as a family loves you. Now listen, let me challenge all of you, please. After this prayer, huh, all of you are automatically members of prayer department for the next one month. You are welcome to prayer department for the next one month. Praise God. So, this is how we do it here. I won't deceive you that once I just pray for you, you go back and meet those friends. They will laugh at you and laugh at me and say forget about them. And then before you know it, you will go back into those things. One of the laws of, of influence is atmosphere. You open yourself to an atmosphere to destroy you. So after I pray for you, um, ushers, what will happen is you can get their names and their details. We we'll forward it to the, um, the prayer department and then we'll keep following up with you from there. You need to keep praying. You need to keep building your spirit. You need to be taught the word of God. And by God's grace, we're helping you. Some of you here will be doing what I'm doing some years to come. You will hold this mic in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you here, the ladies, you may be the wives of great men of God, evangelists and apostles. There is nobody, there's no such thing as hopelessness. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Stretch your hands, saints of God. If you are a mother here, stretch both of your hands. If you are a father here, stretch both of your hands. And say, use them as a point of contact. Whether your children are small or, or not, use them as a point of contact. We pray for you. We are praying for you now. That the power that is responsible for this living will end. I make contact with you. Somebody outside. I 
I may not ask you to come. You stole a phone on Thursday, still with you. Go and return it after this service. Go and return that phone. You love God, but stealing a phone to sell it and causing trouble for somebody is not the way it happens. God can help you and God can bless you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. If I have not touched you, just let me know and I will lay my hands on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you. I command that spirit to leave you. I command that devil to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that devil to leave you. I curse Oh, you are standing here for your brother. Where is he? What a wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus, I use you as a point of contact. As it's happening to you, let it happen to you. In, hold on, don't go. Ah, okay, you are directing them. Okay. We decree and declare. Have I prayed for you, gentlemen? In the name of Jesus, all of you are my friends. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we break this addiction from your lives. Join me and say amen. I pray for any association that will not let you serve God. I command those associations from today. Let them be a dissociation between you and them. Jesus. God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Now, we are going to begin to pray. Have I prayed for them? Have I prayed for you? This guy, you are going to be a man of God. This brother, this gentleman. Bring him. This young man is going to be a man of God. Hold my hands. You need guidance and mentorship. There is a call of God upon your life. Huh? That we we and whatever it is that is still in the call, we cause it now. Name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Self time in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every challenge in my life must come under the authority of Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who are seeking body, I want you to come. Those who are seeking body, overflow one, two, three, inside. Make your way out. us to bring the healing power of God to people and we are very happy. We will continue to do it. Some of you are standing for your loved ones. God has made this place a, a solution center and we honor him for it. Now, please look up. We are going to do two things very quickly. Um, overflow 1, you can go to your projector stand. Overflow 2, your projector stand. Overflow three and every other one four, just join them somewhere there. Someone will come to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. While they are doing this, how many of us came with our prayer request? Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to do very quickly, those online, you can post it online and uh, we are going to connect with it by faith. If you have not written your prayer request or you've not written for your loved ones, do it quickly. The ushers are going to be waving the, a basket. Please, let's do it orderly. Just wave your prayer request and they'll locate you. You'll drop it there and we'll bring it to the altar while we pray. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. Pastor Ejimi will be outside Overflow 1. Pastor Ejimi and Pastor Femi. Overflow 1, he's going to be praying. Pastor Alpha, you'll go to Overflow 2. Um, together with Mike. Mike, you'll follow him. Overflow 2. Overflow 3, Benga and Promise. Two of you will be at Overflow 2 and uh, Overflow 3 and any other Overflow there. Praise the Lord. We'll do it that way. Father, together we release a corporate anointing for miracles, signs and wonders. We decree and declare right now that as we begin to minister to God's people, do a quick walk. Let incurable situations go. Let cancers go. Let HIV go. In the name of Jesus Christ, anoint everyone, oh God, that you are going to be using 
to lay hands on these people and let there be dramatic testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, God bless you. Please, let's go very quickly. We have, let's try to see how we can cover this in 15, 20 minutes. Are we together now? God bless you. Lord, thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Worship team, you will help us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Please accept, listen. Please accept the people laying hands on you, ask you. You don't need to tell them what is wrong with you. Just stand by faith. Praise God. The prophetic is at work. If there is need to prophesy or talk to you, just receive by faith. It doesn't mean we have to touch the area. Just believe by faith. You go and check yourself or call your loved ones. faith. Hallelujah. This is not a ritual that we do. This is a revelation that God gave and an instruction that every miracle service we receive the requests of God's people. No matter how we try to reach everyone we are constrained by time and um, so we are presenting it to the Lord. These are the things that attempt to say Jesus did not die. These are the things that attempt to say the work of the cross was and is a lie. So we bring them before him and we say, Lord, these are the obstacles that stop the revelation of your victory from being established in our lives. And we trust this fire to descend upon them. Stretch your hands by faith. Stretch your hands by faith. Believing. Believing. I want you to pray and say the request I'm dropping here is the last one. The last time I will be dropping this request. Please pray. Shabratukas. Do we still have more? Please. Those online, this is the time you connect with us. Those outside, you can stretch your hand to your, your projectors. God is doing miracles now. God of one. Jabala. Let the angel of the Lord spread. Now arise, O Lord. Will you come to your estimates? Let the arms of your mind. As we close in your righteousness, we celebrate. Father, I declare in the name of Jesus that every request that is upon this altar tonight in the presence of your people let it be turned into speedy testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I ask you to arise in your might visit impossible cases beginning from right now impossible cases I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and I ask that in the name of Jesus Christ let the fire from heaven turn this request some of them humanly impossible requests into testimonies I stand upon this request and as I match them in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that they remain under your feet forever I decree and declare that they remain under your feet forever I decree and declare that they remain under your feet forever I decree and declare that they remain under your feet forever in the name of Jesus Christ Heavenly Father I pray those online their requests we connect by faith and I prophesy that the same fire in this place will visit your requests in the name of Jesus 
those who have been assigned unto death by reason of this prayer they are delivered from death those who have been assigned unto failure by reason of this prayer they are declared a success Lord turn around age long captivities you declared unto us in this miracle service that you are bringing restoration I prophesy that anointing upon this request restore oh God restore oh God restore oh God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ let there be strange restorations right now in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I want to pray for you this is the last segment I want us to connect our time is gone we'll do this very quickly please lift your hands as I pray for you Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, I decree and declare right now every dry book, every dry situation, every hopeless situation in your life, receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Everything called dead in your life, dead finances dead relationships dead career lives in the name of jesus hear the word of restoration i prophesy let it come back to life now i prophesy come back to life now come back to life now come back to life now Every issue that has been a lingering issue for a long time and has refused to leave your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus, let tonight be the last night you will see it. Let tonight be the last night you will see it. He said, these Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever. I command that you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ that is supposed to have opened up to you and we don't know why it has refused to open till now in the name of Jesus at this June miracle service I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you for those who are asking God for direction for the next level beginning from tonight receive encounters that give you direction those outside, make sure you are connecting. Receive encounters that give you direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your life. Every gift that is not yet speaking. Every grace that is, is still dormant within you. Whether spiritual gifts or physical gifts, I decree and declare right now. Shabras kata pakata kata kata, shekete kete kete, mabrato so doko to pa shekete ne. I command an awakening right now. I command a resurrection right now. I command an awakening right now. I command an awakening right now. Hear me. Every creative ability locked up on anyone here that has not found expression, I decree and declare life to your gift, life to your ability in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. There are many people here you are not walking in spiritual gifts. Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. I stretch my hands to you out of the abundance of help and God's grace and mercy. Something is coming upon you now. I decree and declare all nine gifts of the Spirit revealed in Scripture alongside others that have not been recorded at the count of three. Oh God, according to the faith of your people, let there be a distribution.
on right now. One, two, three. Take it right now. 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 Step into those gifts. I release it upon you. I open up your spirit. I open up your understanding to be fruitful towards these gifts in the name of Jesus. I declare upon you the mantle of favor that has made the difference in the life of ordinary people granting them access to platforms access to people access to resources right now in the name of Jesus receive that mantle right now take that anointing of supernatural favor I impart it upon your life I impart it upon your life hallelujah I pray for you right now everything that represents dishonor in your life the Bible says where thou hast been deserted so that no man passes through you you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations I speak over your life the kind of honor that lifts you and distinguishes you above your contemporaries receive that grace now receive that grace now Receive that grace now. Every dying ministry here, come back to life now. Every dying business, help them, help them, please. Every dying business here, come back to life now. In the name of Jesus, every dying destiny here, I command you, come back to life in the name of Jesus. Every dying career, Whatever has destroyed your prayer life so that your, the fervency of your prayer life has gone down in the name of Jesus I found those calls to come back alive I found those calls of your prayer life to come back alive in the name of Jesus I pray for the spirit of revelation like never before access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the operation of the world receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now i impart upon you the gift of faith let it be yours now in the name of jesus i impart upon you the gift of faith capacity to do impossible things receive that grace in the name of jesus I decree and declare one by one beginning from tonight the same way Noah opened the door of the ark and the animals started coming by themselves I command everything that should be in your life and has left you the same anointing that drew the animals one by one to the ark I command you to draw your blessings to your life now command you to throw your blessings to your life now listen Noah did not go to look for the animals he just opened the door the same way you have opened the door of your destiny I command I'm saying it again I want you to believe me it doesn't take time it only takes the right word into your life I decree and declare again between now and the next month's miracle service let there be strange testimonies of restoration strange testimonies of restoration whatever has not been working in your life right now whether it's your academics your marriage whatever it is I force it to work now Anything called barrenness in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Whether they are here or connected by faith, I command anyone called barren become a joyful mother of children. Become a joyful mother of children. I pray for your finances whatever makes this thing hard for you 
I cause that spirit now in Jesus' name. I decree and declare illumination, grace to know what to do, and grace to succeed at whatever you do. Receive it in the name of Jesus. For those who are students, whether on campus, the university, or any other campus, I declare, most of you are on break now, you are about to resume. As you resume, in the name of Jesus, I put life to your academics. I command missing scripts to be found. I command wrongly calculated results to be corrected. In the name of Jesus, as you prepare to write your exams, I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. I prophesy like rain. Hear what I'm saying. I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here trusting God for a job? In the name of Jesus. Between now and the next 30 days, may the God of heaven arise and give you a job that will bring tears to your eyes. Finally, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that if you have never stood here to testify, listen to what I'm saying. If you have never stood here to testify in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with Jesus, the firstborn of the begotten, and I command that God will give you a testimony that will be too big for you to remain on your seat. A testimony that will be too great for you to remain on your seat. A testimony too big to remain on your seat. I decree and declare the spirit of death. There is a strange manifestation of the spirit of death. It always comes like a circle, looms over territory and takes the life of people. I declare, let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family in the name of Jesus let the seal of the blood the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family I cause accidents I cause any kind of tragedy from coming to any family in the name of Jesus Christ finally I pray for you I command in a way like never before the helpers of your destiny I speak over your life the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers even if they came before I call them again thank you for lifting Let us go without giving an opportunity. Please, everyone stand. Any of you, please. Let's honor this altar call quickly. Help, help those under the anointing. There are people here standing and saying, Man of God, I want to make it right with Jesus. Some of you gave your hearts to Him, but for some reason things began to go haywire. And you are saying, Man of God, I want to return back. Some of you are yet to make this decision. Please listen to me inside and outside. Wherever you are, you are saying, Man of God, if you will pray for me, I'm ready to surrender my heart to Jesus. I'm ready to start afresh or start anew. Wherever you are, I want to count five. Please, if you are coming, I want you to run. Clear the way for them. Our time is up and we have to be very, very fast. There are so many other things to do. Wherever you are, as we begin to clap for you, I count five, you should be here. Please run like there's fire on the mountain. One. Those coming from outside, please, protocol, help them, clear the way for them so that they come quickly. Quickly. Two. Koinonia, appreciate them as they come. Run to Jesus Christ. Overflow. One, two, three, four. Everywhere, please, quickly. Three. Please double up, double up, rush, rush, run and come. We're out of time, but this is a decision that is eternal. Come and 
encounter Jesus. God bless you. Come and encounter the power of God. Come and have a fresh start with him. He that did not withhold his only son, but offered him freely, how much more with him shall he give us all things? Keep coming. Three. Four. Five. Praise God. If you're coming, join them quickly. Those of you here in the front, I salute you. I congratulate you. While the rest are making their way coming, please, wherever you are, run, come. Catch up quickly, quickly. Are you rushing, please? Help us so that we can be very fast. We need to attend to people after service. I'd like you to lift your right hand and say this convincingly. Say this passionately. Say this sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you died for me you gave your life for me it's a powerful prayer you are praying tonight I've heard your word and I believe in you I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that Jesus is Lord over my life I believe that God raised him from the dead and I declare that eternal life is mine today right now i am a child of god my sins are forgiven i have the life of christ in me in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i set you free now by the power of the holy spirit and i decree and declare that you begin to enjoy the ministry of the holy spirit in your life i pray for you that you will know the lord like never before i declare that the power of sin the power of the flesh the power of satan is destroyed completely from your life in the name of jesus i declare that you have a new start from tonight and the lord himself will continually be glorified in your life you go forward ever and backward never in jesus name amen and amen god bless you and thank you a gentleman is waving his hands i want all of you to just follow them they'll have your details appreciate you on our behalf god bless you appreciate them in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain